there. You're watching the Aussie Boom Guru. Today I've got a tutorial where I'm going to show you how to use um, user interfaces to create a script that's easy to use. And in this case, the script is going to be focused on exporting an Excel schedule uh, from a schedule in Revit itself. Now there is a manual process users can go through in order to do this, um, but a lot of users aren't aware of how it works or it's just a timely process to teach people how to delimit the file in Excel itself because it comes out as a comma separated value file. So in this case, we're gonna work directly to an Excel file that a user targets, um, and we're gonna build a data shapes user interface and also just some messages to let the user know what's happening as the script runs. I'm finding this is becoming more and more important as a script developer in my career as I pr progress forward um, because often we're building scripts for people that don't really know how they work. So it's good to hold their hand along the way and show them what's happening. So today I'm going to be using a few custom packages. I'm firstly going to be using my own package, Crumple. I'm also going to be using data shapes to generate user interfaces and I'm going to use one node from Bimorph nodes uh, which reads the values of a schedule and returns them as a list. And in the next part, we'll look at how you can actually do the same process, but to write to multiple tabs at the same time in Excel, which is actually a much more powerful script in terms of what it can do. Anyway, let's jump in. So we're gonna begin by looking for schedules by type. And I have a node in my custom package called schedules by type, which literally will split apart all the schedules based on standard schedules, key schedules, and revision schedules. And we're just gonna proceed forward with schedules themselves. Now, one type of schedule I haven't filtered out yet using this node is instances of Keynote legends. So you'll find a lot of schedules with the name of the code legend or the Keynote legend, plus internal and a number. Now, why would Keynote legends be view schedules, you ask? It's pretty crazy. It's sort of like an in-between class in terms of being a legend, but behaving like a schedule. So we're gonna filter these out. So in this case, I'm gonna look at their name using a element name. Now, in this case, we are going to be filtering something that might meet the criteria of another schedule name you may have already. So you might need to be mindful of how you name your schedules. But in this case, I'm going to check if this contains uh, space internal. Um, so I'm going to look for contains and we're going to be checking if this string contains space internal. So the space is included so that you can still have the word internal on the front of a schedule without a space. Um, we're also going to not ignore case just in case we're using an, a lowercase internal. So this should hopefully not filter out any in this case. You might have a schedule called internal finishes or something like that, so you might need to be mindful. And in this case, you're taking that one out as an option, so you might want to rename it. Um, but in this case, we're left um, with a list of Booleans that we can use to mask this input. So I'm going to get a filter by Boolean mask node. And in this case, uh, we should just be left um, in the out list with the schedules that we want. So now we are well, welcome to proceed forward with this list. Now I'm going to get the names of those schedules again because we're going to put this into a user interface where the names of those elements are going to be the keys that we show on the user interface and the schedules are going to be the values that we pass through. We're going to give the user a dropdown. So I'm going to look for the dropdown data node from data shapes. In this case, um, our keys are going to be the name of those schedules and the values are going to be the schedules themselves. So the user will only see the keys. In this case, I'm just going to make a code block and I'm just going to call this um, schedule because we're selecting a schedule. And also as well as this, I'll just say true that we do want to sort by the names of the keys. You shouldn't see anything yet on the screen because we've still got to actually build the interface itself. Um, we're also going to get a file path so we can pick the path to an Excel file. So I'm going to get the file path input from data shapes. Um, always easy to spot them because they have the DS logo. Really like that they did that. Um, from here, we're just going to call this input file path. And default, we're going to leave empty. Um, and for the button text, we'll just say um, select the file path. Dot, dot, dot. So it sort of implies to the user they're expected to provide an input. And finally, we're going to get a text box um, in order for the user to say what the sheet that they're writing the schedule to is called. So by default, sheets and schedule are called sheet one um, in Excel, sorry. So in this case, we're going to assume that uh, sheet one is the default, but we'll say sheet name. We could also say worksheet name so they understand we're talking about Excel worksheets. By default, we're going to make it sheet one and we're going to say false for number entry. It's a text entry. So we now have three buttons for our user interface. Um, we're going to look for the multiple user input form plus plus, um, which is the user interface node itself. I'm going to use the list create node in order to combine these three inputs. And this will build the foundation for our export process. So I'm going to go over to manual mode 
I'm going to connect this to my inputs, which immediately gives our user interface enough to run technically. Um, but I usually like to tune some of the inputs to the user interface itself. I'm going to make a Boolean and I'm going to set it to false for now, but this will be the thing that actually runs the user interface. So I'm going to make a code block. So for the description, um, we're going to call this um, export schedule. For the run button, we're going to call this export. Um, and for the cancel button, we'll call this cancel. For the sizing, uh, max height, I'll say 900. Width, I'll say 600. And label width, I'll say 200. Depending on the version of Revit and data shapes you're using, you might not see the label width option. I think that's quite a new option. Um, I've only seen it in the last few versions I've installed but it's definitely a welcome option to have. So if I now set this to true and run, I should see my user interface. So I'll go run. I'm just gonna save my script as well. I'll just call this demo script one, run. And we should hopefully see a drop down for our schedules, which we do, excellent. So I can pick a schedule. Uh, let's pick room schedule. I'm gonna pick a file path. So in this case, I'm going to go to that Excel file. Um, I haven't actually created one yet. So I'm gonna make an empty Excel file. And I'm just going to save it to my desktop. Notice that the user interface sits on top of everything. Um, so that can be a little bit of a hassle. But in this case, uh, I should now have a file called testing export. And I also can say what the worksheet name is I'm targeting. So I can change that if I want to. But for now, we're going to leave it. I'm going to say export. Now, it's not actually going to do anything yet. All it's going to do is return the inputs. So as a list. And it's also going to say whether it was run or whether it was cancelled. So one thing we're going to do eventually is build up a message for the runner of the script to say whether the script was actually run or not in a little user interface at the end. So I'm going to get the if node and I'm going to check if the script was run. If it was, I'm going to say run completed. If it wasn't, I'm going to say run cancelled. So in this case, I'm going to say run completed. And I didn't used to do this with data shapes, but I've been doing it recently just so the users know uh, when the script is technically finished, because sometimes it can be a bit unclear in Dynamo, um, in Dynamo Player, especially when a script is complete. I'm now going to get all my inputs, so I'm going to index them all. I'm going to take each item at its respective index using a code block. So now I'm going to say um, shared, uh, more Bitcoin spam. Uh, I'm going to say shared is out at index zero. Uh, in this case, I'm going to say path equals out at index one. So I'm calling my out list out as a variable here and I'm indexing it. This is a pretty common technique I use these days to avoid using get item at index, uh, which is, is much more real estate to use in your script. So if I run this, I should now be breaking up my outputs um, in three rows. So we can see that the last output, which the code block shows me, is sheet one, which is the name of the sheet we're going to write to. At this point, I now need um, a node from the bimorph nodes package, the get data. And in this case, we're going to get all the data um, as rows. So we don't have to transpose the data, which is really nice. Um, I'm going to say, yes, get the schedule view. And I don't want to periodically refresh the data. So I'll say false to refresh, which is true by default. I'm going to keep the heading in this case. Um, you could make that another input in data shapes if you wanted to. Uh, but to be honest, deleting one row in Excel doesn't take very long either. Um, in this case, I'm now going to use the export Excel node to ex export my data. Now I'm gonna take my file path from my user interface. I'm gonna take my sheet name from my user interface. And then I'm gonna tune a few variables. I'm gonna set my data. So in a code block, I'm just gonna say that we start and end, uh, we'll start at start uh, column and row zero. So the start of the, the file. And we're gonna say true to overwrite. We always wanna overwrite this file. Gonna connect those inputs. And once we've done that, um, the last thing to do is just to send out a user interface message. So I'm going to run this first, just to show that it worked. And it's going to hold on to those inputs. Um, now, in this case, I think I've sent through the wrong thing. That should work now. And we can see that we've exported our data to Excel um, as it appears in Revit. So this is a brilliant node. Um, you know, thanks to Thomas, the person that makes this package. It's a brilliant node. I use it quite a lot. Um, we're now just going to send through the end of our script to make a little user interface. So I'm going to tell my script to wait until I've finished exporting. So I'm going to say wait for, and I'm going to use this wait for node inside of my own package and crumple. Um, but I'm going to take my message as my data. This is what I want to pass through. I'm going to wait for my Excel node to generate an outcome. And I'm also going to use another node from my package, um, the UI messenger. 
So in this case, I'm going to pass through my message, which is from back here with the if node. And I'm also just gonna say for the title, um, I'll just say script result. And at this point, our script is complete. So a lot of the script is focused around user interface and user experience. Uh, very important, especially when your users don't know how Dynamo works. But in this case, they should see a message when they're finished. So let's test it out in Dynamo Player just to see how it works. So if I go into Dynamo Player and I navigate to where my script is located, so it should open any second now, great. So in this case, um, I think I'm working with demo script one, so there shouldn't be any inputs because I'm using data shapes. In this case, if I press play, it's gonna pop up our data shapes user interface. This is a great thing about data shapes. It means your users have to interact with the script regardless of whether they go to the inputs tab. I really like that about data shapes. So let's just say we're gonna take our sheet list. We're gonna export to that same file, but we're gonna overwrite that file to sheet one. Export, run completed. And sure enough, there's our sheet list. Likewise, we could also cancel the script and nothing should happen, ideally. Cancel. In this case, we've got a run completed, which is very interesting. Um, I might have potentially hooked up the values incorrectly. I might actually have to say it was canceled because maybe it runs even if it's canceled. That might actually be the thing here. So what I might do instead is connect was canceled and I'm going to invert these outcomes. Let's try that instead. I'm going to refresh, run my script. So I guess hitting the cancel button still technically counts as running the script, maybe. There we go, so that works. So you want to use the is cancelled rather than the, the, the was run condition. But we can also just rerun the script, pick another schedule, say my code legend. Test now I think my code legend might be empty because it's a keynote legend that's filtered by sheet, but I'll try it anyway. See what we get. Oh no, there we go, there's all my keynotes in my project. So it's a very quick and easy script to run once it's built, and it's arguably not a super complex script to build as well, but we will um, upgrade it in the next video as well. So I hope this was a useful tutorial and shows you how you can package a process that confuses quite a lot of users into something quite workable using Dynamo. In the next part, I'll show you how you can take this process and scale it up to multiple sheets at the same time in Excel from multiple schedules in Revit. Um, quite a powerful outcome, uh, but a, lot, a much more complex one. And we're gonna use this script as a starting point. Anyway, I'll see you there. Um, if you're not already following and subscribing, uh, feel free to do so. And I look forward to seeing you in future uh, similar tutorials like this one. Thanks, take care, bye.